This is a word-for-word -word account of an experience that occurred to Paul Michael Perlman. He kept this encounter to himself out of fear of ridicule and criticism, but has decided to come forward with his story in the hope that it would encourage others to share their experiences. Here is his story. Although I have never had any interest in New Age or paranormal topics, my mind has been open and I have stayed neutral to subjects of all genres. I am a clean-cut health nut, meaning no drugs, no alcohol, and no mind-altering substances. After my wife and dog were killed by a drunk driver, I sought solace in the deep, remote forests of Northern California. I hiked and camped alone frequently, without fear, because I had already lost everything I cared about and loved dearly. Living off the grid on 160 acres of old-growth forest and being surrounded by national forests, it is very easy to walk out my back door and continue on for miles and miles without seeing anybody. After one particularly emotional and difficult day, I decided to go for a three-day hike-slash-camping trip alone deep into the Six Rivers National Forest. Unused old logging roads turn to narrow trails and almost indecipherable paths that haven't seen human hiking boots in decades. I enjoyed the peace and quiet of nature as I reflected on my life alone, and my thoughts drifted without direction or scrutiny. I made a small, unobtrusive campsite, and I settled down for the night with just my Arctic sleeping bag so I could absorb the full experience of outdoor slumber. The last thing I did before closing my eyes was to set a small wood-framed picture of my wife and dog next to me so I could say goodnight to them both, a ritual that allowed me a small measure of familial comfort. Instead of sleep, tears found their way to my eyes I began to sob with deep primal cries that only the grief-stricken could comprehend. Although not loud, my anguish drew the attention of woodland creatures. As I began to hear stick breaks in what I estimated to be in several directions around where I lay. Unconcerned at first, I quickly gathered my senses and fell quiet. In an instinctive response to what I assessed to be a possible threat, I heard more and bigger stick breaks, then very heavy bipedal-like footfalls coming closer my way from multiple directions. I lay still and breathed evenly to maintain full situational awareness. The darkness was thicker than black, with no moonlight to reveal the identities of the nocturnal walkers. I had no weapons for protection and my military flashlight lay just out of reach. That is when I saw the first set of what I can only describe as eye shine without a provoking light source. This was unlike anything I had ever witnessed in nature, as it was the color of light used in infrared cameras. The size of the reddish eye shine was the sobering size of tennis balls. Each eye Normally not prone to panic, my heart pounded and my mind raced to rationalize how this eye shine could be reflecting a non-existent light. It was at that moment a second set of red eye shine presented itself just beyond the first. The light source for this was coming from within the very eyes that were focused on me. I estimated that these enormous eyes were at least 10 feet off the ground and holding a steady gaze in my direction. The stick breaks continued all around me in what sounded like a dozen different directions, forming a circle completely around my little campsite. As I was captive in my sleeping bag with no route of escape, resignation to whatever fate would befall me volleyed with the sheer terror of being attacked and eaten alive by an unknown group of predators who were intentionally positioning themselves in formation around me in the darkness only I could see. I could feel them, 
an enormity of size and mass that would support the heavy footfall and the tennis ball supersized eye shine. A third, and then a fourth set of reddish eye shine focused on me, though staying at a distance of what I approximated to be about 20 feet. My sensory overload could hear heavy bipedal footfalls and stick breaks forming a circle around me. My eyes could see reddish eye shine from four different unknown forest dwellers aimed directly at me. I could feel the etheric energy emanating from the entire group whose circular formation was deliberately positioned. One of them blinked. Like Morse code or a telegraphing telepathy that instantly relieved my dread of impending doom. A deliberate blink as if to convey a gesture of goodwill through an unspoken eye signal. Although my vision searched the pitch blackness for any detail to help me make sense of what was occurring, I could hear the sound of large bodies shifting, sitting, or possibly laying down one at a time. I counted twelve, but there could have been more or less. All kinds of images filled my imagination of who or what this could be. Gorillas? Bears? Wolves? Cougars? No, not any of those. Then I smelled a musky odor, and I failed in my attempt to place it to anything known to me. I wondered if I was dreaming, hallucinating, or having a mental breakdown. Did I die and this was hell? Could someone have followed me without my noticing? Did I accidentally stumble upon a secret government black project? None seemed plausible scenarios. The musky odor smelled wild, alive, and filled my nostril with native memories I could not remember. I made a fist and felt my hand clutch tight, my fingers all knuckles and I still felt alive in my body. I was really here, experiencing this, the center of a circle of what? Faint sparkles of light, wisps here and there, became visible above and around my body, still cocooned and enveloped in my sleeping bag. They were dancing to an unsung song appearing out of nowhere, yet seemingly demonstrating intelligence. Beyond these light wisps, bubbles of various small marble sizes floated dreamily while illuminating a faint glow of green and blue light. I felt overwhelmed by so many luminary distractions, yet the elephant in the room was whatever or whoever encircled me on the periphery. As the faint sparkles, wisps, and bubbles of various colors of lights played in airspace above and around me, it was in a singular moment when time seemed to freeze that I saw the unmistakable face of the... I couldn't even bring myself to say it. The thought of this being true was preposterous to my fixed world view, yet here it was, right in front of me a man-beast that looked incredibly the same and identical to what others, others that were supposedly nutty, crazy, wacky, and loony, referred to as Bigfoot. The soft illumination of glow from the sparkles and the bubbles shared enough residual light to make the facial features of these nocturnes visible. I shuddered, yet was transfixed at what I could not deny. A man-like beast whose enormous size and stature dwarfed my own. Eyes intent, yet humanized. A face filled with every emotion known to the civilized world, but more. Those eyes, like through the looking glass eyes. The light coming from their eyes were like the chariots of the gods. An intelligence far beyond anything on earth. I felt spellbound. I could make out a massive head, the beastly broad shoulders, a giant chest, dark hair that was wild and tame at the same time. 
an unrestrained elegance of untouched wild. Wisdom, millenniums ahead of us. Godly, saintly, beastly, grandiose by undesign. How could this be? And how could this not be? My consciousness allowed the acceptance that I was surrounded by these magnificent giants in a circle designed by them. But for what purpose? And why now? And why me? I had spent years hiking and camping alone in the woods and had never had anything out of the ordinary happen. No forest strangeness whatsoever. But here, now, it was real and immediately apparent that there was rhyme and reason for this meeting of the minds. At this point, a low murmur of sounds and some type of chatter began among the circle of giants. And I mean no disrespect to them. I am calling it for what it was. And they were big, very big, beyond big. They were, in fact, giants, all of them. It was a chatter-like communication I did not and could not understand. I did not see any lips move whatsoever, but sounds were coming out of their mouths very fast. A dialect I can't compare to any language I have ever heard or am aware of. I'll call it big speak. Yet they understood each other and became quite animated with the ensuing discussion they were engaged in. At one point, it seemed to become a bit agitated, but then leveled off to a more reasonable tone. I had become aware that as quickly as the big speak began, it ended. Then it was back to silence for what felt like a few minutes, though time seemed to dilate in their presence a term equal to time dilation. I felt acutely that they could somehow manipulate time, bend it, stretch it, stop it, control it. I also intuitively felt that they created and controlled the sparkles, the wisps, and the bubbles of light. For what purpose, I will not hazard a guess. Just when I thought the strangest could not increase, it did so, exponentially. Music from behind them, sounds of light piccolo, a few notes at a time. Who was playing the musical instruments? I saw no piccolos, nor did I see anything or anyone behind the big ones. After the music stopped, I felt very sleepy, but forced my eyes to stay open. I was still sequestered in my sleeping bag yet the urge to sleep was overwhelming. Though nothing surprised me at this point, I swear I felt the earth move under my body like an earthquake. Upon closer awareness, it was my body that was vibrating, not the earth beneath me. A light buzzing inside my entire being, but not unpleasant in any way. Unusual and unexpected, but somehow enjoyable like an energy reset of my entire electrical system. I bathed in buzzing and allowed it to run from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. It was exhilarating in its strangeness. I was acutely aware that this vibrating energy was being directed at me and to me by the big ones, very intentionally. For what purpose, I do not know for what seemed like no more than a couple of hours, but it was actually all night, because as the vibrating began to cease, the night was nearing its end. I felt so completely exhausted that sleep was taking me, but before doing so, I forced myself to stay awake to witness the big ones stand, and one by one leave the circle, each moving into the night forest in different directions, but in ordered fashion. When there was just one left, I caught its gaze directed at me. I could see the volume of wisdom, understanding, and intelligence in its eyes. This was not a beast, or a monster, or an untamed animal. This was something so unique and supernatural that no words could capture its true nature. 
I heard no stick breaks on their way out of my little campsite. How could that be possible if that is what I heard on their way in? The little sparkles, wisps, and bubbles of light left with them, and my campsite was once again dark, quiet, and I was completely alone. Upon waking in late morning, the sun was high in the sky. I turned to say good morning to the photograph of my wife and dog, but the framed picture was gone. I jumped up and frantically searched all over, but it was not there. It was not anywhere. After I got back home, I went to see the ophthalmologist to have my eyes checked, and all was fine. Then I had a physical and got a clean bill of health. I wanted to rule out any health problems. I did. In the time since this Bigfoot encounter, I have had three more, very similar in nature. The others were in Olympic National Park, Mount Rainier National Park, and El Dorado National Forest. I have never seen the picture of my wife or dog again. Thanks for listening to my Bigfoot encounter. Paul Michael Perlman